this is the normal mode of transportation for a cold opening on do you speak geek but it it was on my heart so i feel like i should just be obedient i guess and say these words hopefully as i try to encourage someone out there in the process i also encourage myself you know you're good enough you're good at what you do you're you are good enough just you yourself and i'm here to just tell you whoever you are out there keep pushing keep going keep posting keep recording keep cosplaying keep drawing keep writing whatever it is you do in this nerd space or even outside of it keep going I know you you're on the racetrack of life and you're looking to your left and you're looking to your right and you're seeing these people who have not only been doing it longer than you have, but also have been not doing it as long as you have. It can be a little discouraging to see others progress and succeed and you feel stuck. But don't feel that way. Your time is coming. Now you can choose to wait for it or take the first shot you get. I just want to be able to tell you don't give up. Because someone out someone out there needs you. And they need what you do. Don't give up. Ladies and gentlemen, Blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek, episode 87. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Do You Speak Geek. I am your host, Nix. This is the podcast where you can get all of your news and reviews in the geek and nerd realm. Shout out to everybody, and I mean everybody who has been rocking with us thus far. Y'all are the real MVPs. I love each and every one of y'all. I don't take none of y'all for granted. Y'all are my family. I appreciate y'all so, so much. Shout out to all the new subscribers. Any new followers on social medias, subscribers of the podcast, and also the YouTube channel. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. And to any new people, welcome to Do You Speak Geek. Shout out to Spreaker. That's the home team. If you're listening, you're probably listening on Spreaker. If not, then you're listening to one of the other many podcast outlets that DYSG is streaming on. So wherever you listen to your podcast, Hit that search and go ahead and subscribe to Do You Speak Geek. Do You Speak Geek dot com, the central hub for everything. And I mean everything. D.Y.S.G. Videos, blogs, new merch store. We got it all over there. So please be sure to hit up Do You Speak Geek dot com and save it to your favorites. I'd appreciate that. Follow us on social media. Facebook at D.Y.S.G.F.B. Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets and Instagram at Do You Speak Geek. The YouTube channel is the only place where you can find the Dono and Daddy show. Please be sure to hit that subscribe, hit that like, Hulk smash that bell for all notifications and leave your comments. We want to know what y'all think. Let's go ahead and do what we do about this time, people. Y'all already know. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. Are you ready? 
All right, my nerds, my blurs, let's hop on these reviews. Masters of the Universe Revelation Part 1. It uses the original He-Man sandbox to truly go wild and explore these characters in ways that allows them to break tired molds and dissolve old conventions. Pretty good series so far. If you have not been watching, please be sure to go to Netflix and watch that today. Death's Door blends classic dungeon puzzle solving with fast-paced combat encounters to create a memorable adventure across a moody world brimming with secret paths and hidden rewards. Check this game out, people. Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins. Me and Donna went and saw this. With a star turn for Henry Golding, Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins is a admirable attempt to give a well-deserving franchise another at-bat. If they are going to continue on with this story into other Joe movies, hey, I'm on board. Old. <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan is a very eccentric director, and this isn't his best work. It's one that shows maturity, and it's a movie that tackles universal and intense themes over twists and puzzles. I mean, yeah, it's cool. Check it out if you get a chance. It's cool. Chris Tales, the telling of a charming JRPG tale in a gorgeous and weird world, but it's hobbled by incredible monotonous combat. So, if you enjoy the visuals, and not all this grinding you're going to have to do, it's worth a shot. And Last Stop, tells three interesting stories, but lacks enough meaningful choices or consequences to create an investment in its drama. Basically, it doesn't have a lot of replay value, but good game no less. Those are our reviews, people. Let's go ahead and hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all already know the vibes. Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the Source Wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. The pull list this week we got United States of Captain America number two. Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson are hot on the trail of the Shield Thief, but their adversary remains one step ahead, and he has friends in low places. Some of Captain America's oldest enemies are behind this scheme, but can Sam and Steve figure out who these enemies are and what they want in time to stop them? And then a story by Momohel Mashigo and Natasha Bruos. Who is Nichelle Wright, the Captain America of Harrisburg? And will her community stand up for her when she when the shield thief frames her for a terrible crime? Pretty decent story so far, but we'll keep watching it. Icon and Rocket Season 1 number 1. Oh yes, happy day. Long ago, the stranded alien known as Arnus gave up hope of returning to his home planet. Tragically, he also realized that his adopted home of Earth was beyond saving. Content to waste away his long life in a human guise, Arnus was past caring until the day a young woman named Raquel Irvin crashed into his life. Soon, she convinced him to put his incredible power to work again as the heroic icon and to transform her into his sidekick, Rocket. But an innocent question of Rocket's part, why can't we do something about the drugs on my corner? Quickly set a chain of events in motion, leading to the pair becoming the most hunted beings on Earth. And they're not just being pursued by Earthlings either. Writer, director, and producer Reginald Hudling and superstar artist Doug Braywith unleash a tale of power and responsibility that will stretch from the boardrooms of corporate America to the jungles of South America and the depths of deep space. If you've ever thought there were certain things that a superhero story just couldn't do, it might be time to start thinking differently. This story sounds incredible. I cannot wait to read this one next week. Superman, Son of Kal-El number one. Jonathan Kent has experienced a lot in his young life. He's fought evil with Robin, traveled across galaxies with his Kryptonian grandfather, and lived in the future with the Legion of Superheroes, who were intent on training him for the day his father could no longer be Superman. 
there is a hole in the Legion's history that prevents John from knowing exactly when that will happen, but all signs point to it being very soon. It's time for the son to wear the cape of his father and continue the never-ending battle as a symbol of hope for his home planet. I think Donald will love this one, but we'll have to see. And finally, Infinite Frontier number three. Barry Allen's history at with the Psycho Pirate isn't pleasant. The Flash encountered this mind-bending villain all the way back in the original Crisis on Infinite Earths, and it did not end well for the Scott Speedster. Yeah, we know how that ended. <laughs> for the first time since his death and rebirth, Barry runs afoul of this foe. Hopefully it will go better this time around. That is if the even bigger villain behind the pirate stays out of the fray, or if President Superman of Justice Incarnate sticks around to help win the day. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty intense this book is right now. In source wall news, Marvel announces the return of Luke Cage. So Marvel has announced that Luke Cage will make a return to the pages of Marvel Comics. <laughs> Sorry, had to do it. In October, Marvel will launch Luke Cage City of Fire, a three-issue miniseries that will serve as something of a modern-day character piece vehicle for Luke Cage by examining his Hispanic role, his expanded role in Marvel's Harlem neighborhood, as well as the larger Marvel universe. The series will also see Cage go up against a group of villains called the Regulators, shout out to Warren G and Nate Dog, as well as the police after a black man in Cage's community is shot to death. That socio-political firestorm will bring Luke Cage into the orbit of both Daredevil and his nemesis, Mayor Wilson Fisk. While Luke Cage City of Fire may be the Marvel comic project, it certainly has all the ingredients to be a standout for fans of Marvel's Netflix series and its Luke Cage and Daredevil TV series. The timing couldn't be more opportune a lot of Marvel fans have been hoping to see the Netflix series and characters integrated into the MCU now that Loki's uh, created the multiverse. So now we'll see this new Luke Cage series as a proverbial testing of the franchise waters. Hopefully, they will bring everybody back. Those are your comics, people. Please be sure to cop those next week at your local comic book store. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, people, we have a banger of a watch this list of news. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Injustice Gods Among Us movie cast and release window has been announced. So DC has revealed the cast of its upcoming Injustice God Among Us animated movie alongside the announcement that it will release this fall. The Injustice animated movie was announced last month, oddly enough, through a press release of DC's upcoming Batman The Long Halloween Part 2 animated movie. And now the Hollywood Reporter has revealed the cast for the movie. It features an expansive cast with a lot of names you might recognize. Justin Hartley as Superman, Anson Mount as Batman, Laura Bailey as Lois Lane and Ramakushna, Zach Callison as Damien, presumably Damien Wayne and Jimmy Olsen, Brian T. Delaney as Green Lantern, Mike, Brandon Michael Hall as Cyborg, Edwin Hodge as Mr. Terrific and Killer Croc, Olivia Hudson as Plastic Man, Oliver Hudson, sorry, as Plastic Man, Jillian Jacobs as Harley Quinn, Yuri Lowenthal as Mirror Master, Flash, and Shazam, Derek Phillips as Nightwing and Aquaman, Kevin Pollock as Joker and Jonathan Kent, Anika Noni Rose as Catwoman, Reed Scott as Green Arrow and Victor Zaz, Faran Tahir as Rachel Ghoul, Fred Tatascori as Captain Adam, Janet Varney as Wonder Woman, and Andrew Morgoda as Mirror Master's Soldier. The Hollywood Reporter report that Rick Morales, best known for Mortal Kombat legend Scorpion Revenge, is producing the movie alongside Jim Krieg with Sam Register to set to executive produce. 
It will feature a script by Batman Hush animated movie writer Ernie Albacker and will be directed by Justice League Dark Apocalypse director Matt Peters. You'll be able to hear about this cast in Justice when it's released for home entertainment this fall. Yo, cast sounds dope. I'm really loving who they have writing this and directing it. This might be the GOAT of all the DC animated movies. And would serve to say that DC may just stay on top forever when it comes to animation, right? Maybe not. Marvel's Victoria Alonso teases mini studio for animation. Quote, we have so much coming your way that you might tell us, okay, take a break now. This was said by Victoria Alonso, executive VP of film production at Marvel Studios during a recent interview. While Marvel's next show, What If, will be the studio's first animated series, it will be far from the last. Quote, we're going to have our animation branch and mini studio, and there will be more to come from that as well, Alonzo said. We're super excited about animation, which is her first love. <sighs> oh well, good run. Good run, DC. You had it, yeah, you had some lock, you had it unlocked for a while there, but uh, I'm gonna come in there and uh, spank that booty. <laughs> nah, but seriously though, Marvel um, produced some pretty good animated films back in the day. The two Avengers were dope, of course, Hulk versus was amazing, but we'll see, we'll see what happens, and I think that this will create even more competition when it comes to the animated realm of these comic book movies and characters so yeah i'm definitely excited for it okay so this new story dropped and that's when the world went crazy yeah so leslie grace has been cast as barbara gordon in hbo max's bat bat girl film dc films universe has finally found its barbara gordon It was confirmed via the rap in that the In the Heights star Leslie Grace will be playing Barbara Gordon Batgirl in live action, beginning with a Batgirl solo movie that's set to debut exclusively on HBO Max. The film, which has been in the works since 2017, has ramped up development in recent months, enlisting Miss Marvel and Bad Boys for Life directors Adlib El Arabi and Balad Falham to helm the upcoming project. The Batgirl script is written by Christina Hodson, whose work includes Birds of Prey and the upcoming Flash movie. Now, the way things are set up, it looks like alongside with the Gotham PD series that's going to be on HBO Max, that this is also going to be set in the same universe or Earth as Matt Reeves' Batman. You all are not aware, Leslie Grace is not white. She is not a redhead. She's a black woman. And looking at Jeffrey Wright, who's also a black man, who was cast to play Jim Gordon in Matt Reeves' Batman, it only makes sense that if they're going to cast a black woman to play Batgirl, that this is the Batgirl who's the daughter of Jeffrey Wright's Jim Gordon. Unless they're going to pull some Batman and Robin bullshit and she's just not Commissioner Gordon's daughter. She's like Alfred's niece or Robin's cousin, (laughs) you know, or, you know, like, I don't know, maybe Tweedledee and Tweedledum's former babysitter. I don't know. But if they're going to stick with the comic format and make her Barbara Gordon, like they say here, then, yeah, it just makes sense that that's the route that they're going. They're following Matt Reeves' universe. But racist fanboys lost their minds, lost their absolute minds when this was hit. And the tears were delicious. I'll just say that. Manifest could reportedly be saved by Netflix. Now, weeks after NBC sent Manifest to the chopping block, (laughs) that's a wow. The network may reverse its decision and opt to renew the series after all, but they're not the only ones. Word has it, Netflix is also interested in picking up the series for new episodes despite turning the renewal down earlier this summer. The latest reporting comes from Deadline, which suggests both NBC and Netflix are in talks with Warner Brothers TV with regards to a potential revival. 
As you might expect with the situation, there are a few hurdles in place both distributors are concerned with before moving on. First off, the show's cast has reportedly been released from their respective contracts. And should a renewal come across the board, the production company would have to renegotiate with all actors and crew members. Just get it done, man. <laughs> Just get it done. Manifest was amazing. And that just seems to be the formula. I mean, some networks or some other platforms drop these series. And then once Netflix gets their hand on it, it's amazing. I mean, people forget that Cobra Kai originally was a YouTube original series. And it was still dope then. The first two seasons were on there. And I watched those. And once it hit Netflix, everybody was like, oh, my God, it's the best show ever. Like, yeah, I knew that already. But anyway, hopefully Manifest does get picked up by Netflix and maybe even NBC renewing it. But yeah, those contracts, I don't know. But get it done, though. Dragon Ball Super has a new movie coming out, and we know the title now. After an official teaser earlier this year that a new Dragon Ball Super movie is in the works, a recent San Diego Comic-Con panel has revealed the official upcoming title. Dragon Ball Super Superhero is slated to premiere sometime in 2022. While not much is known about the film yet, series producer Akio Ayoko said the Dragon Ball Super Special panel that the decision to add supers in the title was to emphasize that this movie is about the superhero vibes. The panelists also noted that the film will include some new designs of several characters from the franchise, as well as a brief teaser that shows off a new animation style. While the teaser was short, producer Hadashi encourages fans to rewatch it. I won't go into details today, but you'll notice if you watch it many times, Hadasha said during the panel. So, now you know the title of the Dragon Ball movie coming out next year. It's called Superheroes. I feel like there's going to need to be a big, big threat. And we'll see what happens. I'm going to be in theaters to watch it regardless. Because I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about that saying life. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, just saying. <laughs> And finally, Michael B. Jordan will produce potentially star in Superman limited series for HBO Max. Michael Jordan is now in the DC business, but we knew that already with the whole, you know, working on static shock. The actor and his production company, Outlier Society, are developing an HBO Max limited series focusing on Val Zod, a Kryptonian that holds the mantle of Superman per Collider. According to reports, Outlier Society has already tapped a writer to pen the script for the series. Jordan is attached to produce and could potentially star, though the actor has not committed to the role. Jordan and Outlier Society limits, limited series is not the same as the Superman film reboot in the works from writer Ta-Nehisi Coates and producer J.J. Abrams. The Bad Robot Project has announced its intention to cast a black actor as Kal-El, in April, Jordan downplayed rumors that he was the one up for the role. Now, <laughs> it's it, 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 it's it's a catch-22, how I look at it. On one hand, dope. Valzad. We got Valzad. That's, that, that's, that's great. But, as I said before, in one of my videos on YouTube, it's kind of like, do we really want to see more black versions of these characters we already know or do we want to see the actual black characters that we know it's i don't know it's i mean i'm still i mean me knowing me and knowing the source material that i know i'm still gonna watch it anyway but it's like damn like we we cancel black lightning but you give us this it's cause like i don't know it's just that there's there's always that fine line between representation and tokenism and with this one, the line is intensely blurred. No pun intended. Let's hop into Thumb Life. Peace, love, and video games. That's all my Donkey Kong. Batman is playing Galaga. All right, gamers, we have news. EA Play Live 2021. Let's get into the business. 
It was announced during the EA Play Live 2020, 2021 event following previous rumors of the Dead Space remake. EA confirmed Motive is currently working on a Dead Space 1 remake set to be released on PS5, Xbox Series X and S and PC. No official release date or window was given, but the first teaser trailer offered an in-engine look at the mood and tone Motive is striving to capture with the remake. Y'all, it looks amazing. Dead Space remake. Let's let's all let's go plus ultra. Let's go go on this one. Absolutely. Battlefield Portal is a new mode in Battlefield 2042 that lets players create complex custom game modes using assets from Battlefield 2042, Battlefield 1942, Battlefield Bad Company 2, and Battlefield 3. There will be six classic maps, 40 plus weapons, and 40 plus vehicles from three theaters of war, seven different armies from classic titles, plus Battlefield 2042 specialist. Y'all, when I saw that, when the trailer just opened with that guy firing the rocket in midair, like I was like, I'm done. I'm playing this. <laughs> like, just go ahead, take my 70 bucks now. Just let's just go. <laughs> I'm playing this. Yeah, it looks amazing, y'all. Please check it out and I get a chance. The studio behind F1 Dirt and Project Cars has revealed Grid Legends, a new racing game that is set to arrive in 2022. The game will feature a live action story that was filmed with the same tech used by The Mandalorian. Sex Education's Nishi Gatwa will star in the story mode and players will be placed in the driver's seat of the Grid World Series as an underdog against the Raven West team. Grid Legends will feature a ton of different cars and will have everything from big rigs to supercars and will take players to such locations as Moscow, London, and Stradia Alpine. Looks pretty decent. Never been a Grid guy, but what the hell, I'll check it out. Apex Legends Emergence will officially arrive on August 3rd alongside Seer, the newest legend to join the battle. Like Bloodhound, Seer will be able to track enemies, yet this new character will use heartbeat sensors to indicate where enemies may be. Seer's ultimate will send out micro drones to create a sphere that will track any enemies that pass through it. Unlike Bloodhound, Seer is stealth based and focused mostly on precision. Ranked arenas will also be joining Apex Legends with Emergence and new maps are in the works for arenas. Respawn also announced that Seer's gameplay reveal take place on this Monday, which is today when you guys are hearing this podcast. Man. I know my boy Clutch is gonna get down on that Apex though. I'm gonna have to hit him up and see how he thinks about this. EA shared a new look at Lost Random, a game that mixes real-time action and turn-based tactics. The game follows two sisters separated by an evil queen and players will need to solve puzzles and battle enemies to right these wrongs. There will be multiple dialogue options and the coins you collect in game can be traded for in can be traded in for cards and give players new attacks and abilities lost and random is set to be released on september tur- september 10th i was at september 3rd september 10th 2021 on ps5 ps4 xbox series x xbox one switch and pc and finally the dodgeball game knockout city's second season will be themed around movies this new season will bring with a new map new gear and a new soda ball weapon Knockout City's fight at the movie season will arrive on the 27th. Knockout City is that game. Trust me, if you ain't playing it, you'd hop on that. All right, people, let's mark out. So what you gonna do? (laughs) Goodbye and good night. Bang! All right, people. The big news this week has to be the potential that AEW could be signing or may have already signed both CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Now, Fightful Select Sean Ross Sapp reported this past Wednesday morning that Punk is in the ongoing talks for return and that all elite wrestling is the most likely landing point. 
this matches up with what Punk said in an interview with Rene Paquette on Oral Sessions last year. Quote, when he said, I think the landscape currently is much different than when I left. You can play the game where you're like, oh, AEW is an option. Would you have gone right after you left WWE? If you're going to play this game, there's no way that WWE would have handled it the way they handled it with the suspending me for two months and nobody contacting me. And the next thing I know, I got my release papers on my wedding day. That would have happened if there was an that wouldn't have happened if there was a WWE an AEW. Because then they probably would have approached me and been like, hey, your suspension is up. Ready to come back to work? Let's work this out. Or handle it like any other sports organization would have handled it. Handle the star pitcher and you know you're going home. You know, they're not just going to let you leave the team or and go to rival organization. Yeah, I totally understand what Punk is saying there. Daniel Bryant also heading to AEW according to multiple reports released by Cassidy Haynes of Viceslam.net on this past Wednesday. The former champion's contract with WWE expired several months ago, and Haynes wrote on Wednesday not only has the American Dragon already signed the deal, but he is set to debut for the AEW Dynamite Grand Slam event in New York City on September 22nd. The report stated Brian asked for a comparable pay, fewer dates, and the freedom to also work in Japan, all of which he was granted. It was the ability to wrestle with New Japan that sealed the deal for Brian, according to Wrestling Observer's Matt, uh, Dave Meltzer. While he couldn't confirm whether or not Brian has signed, Meltzer did say Brian was in negotiations with WWE, AEW, and New Japan and wanted to make sure he could compete in Japan's most popular promotion. Y'all, <laughs> if they F around and let Daniel Bryan and CM Punk into AEW together, like WWE has been in trouble for a while now, but if they get, yo, Daniel Bryan is going to have an incredible twilight year and CM Punk is just going to dominate. <laughs> He's going to dominate. There's going to be a deafening on the in the crowd once he grabs that mic it'll be game over and i for one have plenty of fancy booking matches i would love to see in aw if those two popped up oh yeah absolutely but y'all that is the pod that is my time i am going to get out of here thank you all for listening please 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 be sure to follow this podcast subscribe to this podcast let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Visit the website, doyouspeakgeek.com. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out our YouTube channel. Please be sure to like and subscribe to the videos there. As always, people, live to play. Play to win. Win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?